Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do a DIY St. Patrick's Day paper banner. So excited, Pinterest inspired. I'm going to use a variety of papers. They don't have to be cardstock, they could be craft paper. Um, I have these ones from the Dollar Tree as well as some that I bought a million and a half years ago. Um, also, from a million and a half years ago, this is this faux parchment paper in the color copper. Um, and we're going to print some music, sheet music on it. These are Irish ditties that I just looked up. Um, and then as well as some Celtic font that I have the letters P-A, two T's and two S's. Um, just to write St. Pat's, but you could spell look or Irish, anything you want, and of course some jute cord to string them all together. The other thing I didn't mention that we're going to use is um, whatever kind of adhesive you want to use. So we're going to use a little bit of glue stick, um, you know, like kids school group glue stick, um, and some double stick tape that I had left over. So as I cut this paper out, I'm going to make the first background paper, um, this craft paper um, colored cardstock. I bought it when Eden got married a couple of years ago, and I've had it with doing absolutely nothing with it. So I thought that'd be a nice farmhouse, old world um, looking background. So I'm doing is essentially cutting in half. I am messing up. Um, I should have measured first instead of just folding it in half and trying to work that way. Um, but now I'm going to measure. So each one is going to measure uh, roughly five and a half inches. It ended up actually being uh, five and three, uh, sorry, five and three eighths inches, five and seven eighths inches wide is what it ended up being. Um, and then you're going to use your green colored cardstock. If you want green colored paper, you can use construction paper. Um, you're just going to cut it. I cut mine about uh, three eighths of an inch narrower and shorter uh, than the base paper. And then I'm going to cut the music notes three eighths of an inch um, smaller than that. Um, the reason why we're doing that is because we want this layered effect um, that was Pinterest inspired. It was really pretty. It said luck. It was it was a little different than what I'm doing, but it had the music notes. It had the word luck on it, and it had like a green paper in the back. Um, so I was challenged as I'm cutting, and I'll tell you, um, I've made a template to cut the music notes out so I can actually have like the sheet music lined up where I want it to be all sheet music back there. Um, but I was challenged to do um, a weeks of DIYs with just items that I already have. Um, and since I don't know that I'll be able to do a week's worth, but I'm going to mention it every time that I've done a DIY with nothing that I've had to purchase. Um, now, granted, this copper parchment paper I bought when we were getting married in 2000. And um, the cardstock as well, the green cardstock was actually from when I was doing a Garth Brooks scrapbook back in 1997. <laughs> And I printed um, these music sheet music off of Google uh, Images, where I just Google imaged Irish Irish uh, folk songs or Celtic music, Irish music, and I just found ones that a uh, sheet music, excuse me, and then I found ones that I liked. There's Danny Boy, Irish Eyes Are Smiling, Molly Malone. Um, which you may know as cockles and muscles, that one. Um, but I just picked out six different songs, and I printed it on that copper paper so it does look aged. But um, Megan over at Glue Guns and Roses, and I can link her video in the description box down below, has a really great technique for using old coffee or coffee um, to stain paper to make it look aged. I just didn't have the patience to do that, so <laughs> um, I, I, I opted not to. And now I'm cutting out um, four inch squares of the uh, craft paper color to go right behind my letters. When I originally put my letters on top of the music sheet music, it just blended in too much. I wanted it to stand out a little bit, so I put a square behind each one of the letters. Now, um, cutting the letters out is optional. You could trace them onto your craft paper. Um, you can just hand write them. You can use stickers, whatever preferred method you want. I, of course, was trying to do this without buying anything. So I went ahead and I took um, the the sample, the font sample off of Google Images, blew up the three letters, the four letters that I needed. Yeah, four letters that I needed and um, went ahead and printed them out. And they're roughly, they're roughly three and a half inch squares. Um, 
and I, I just really like them that way. Um, and I'm cutting where I'm leaving a little bit of a white border. But if you had decided to color these letters in um, or use just cut the white a white square around them um, instead of doing the um, the 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 natural color craft paper square, um, you could. That's entirely up to you. I'm just trying to do you know what I thought would be visually pretty. Um, and then don't forget you're going to need two T's and two S's to write St. Pat's. Um, and that's what I decided to do. Like I said, the sample had said lucky. Um, it's funny cause I don't always associate lucky with St. Patrick's day because my brother's name is, uh, nickname is lucky. And whenever I see that, I always just associate it with him. So, um, yeah, I guess the luck of the Irish is, is kind of a, kind of a big thing to everybody else too. I just wanted to give you a tip when cutting out intricate work like this is I'm a righty so I want to always make sure that the scissor blade is to the right of where I'm trying to cut so I can see it if you ever try to cut backwards you may risk um, cutting something you don't want to and um, you can get as close to the line as you want to if I would have made a fatter edge um, then it would have been a little easier to not have to cut out all the details, but I wanted a closer edge. I wanted to show you that it is possible. Um, and you might have to go in from time to time. Like I said, I used to leave like big sections there and then go back and with more detail work. Um, but I was imagining if they were stickers, you know, when you get stickers from the factory, sometimes they do have a little white edge around it. Sometimes they have a big white edge around it. So it's really a matter of what appeals to your, um, what appeals to your eye and what appeals to your aesthetic. So to cut out in the middles, you know, we just poke a hole with our scissor gently so not to crinkle the paper. And then what I ended up doing for the A is I cut out a big chunk so I can get my scissor in there. That's why I always try to cut away um, the ex excess material. It just helps. Um, now I want to apologize here because my camera was having problems. Um, so you didn't see me cut the V the, the banner shape out of the bottom of all of the natural colored paper. Um, but what I just did was I folded it in half like we've always do it, done and I've cut high on the um, seam side uh, to the to the corner of the of the cut paper side. And then I took that original triangle and I used it as a template for the rest of for, for the green paper papers as well as the um, music sheet sheet music excuse me because I wanted to get the same angle so I wanted to just use that as a template um, and then when I was all done I just made sure that I lined it up it looks good uh, this is where I realized that um, to show you options that you could have put green back there or um, why I chose to do squares I just wanted to show you that really quickly all right and then um, I did have one that the printer kind of ran out of ink at the last minute, so I just adjusted that. That's not a huge deal. Now I'm cutting the, um, the three eighths of an inch off the top of the green and the um, three quarters of an inch off the top of the sheet music note. And that was not necessarily necessary to do because we're going to flap over um, this circle at the end, but um, I just did it just to go ahead and um, just to make it in case I decide in case send, somebody could see it without wanting to do that. All right. Yeah, because you could always poke holes or punch holes on both sides and just thread it. You don't have to do the flap over green like I chose to. So now we're going to use just this craft glue stick to glue down the letters. They're delicate. I ripped two, three of them technically. Two I ripped pieces off. One I ripped a little bit in half. But I wanted to, to show you that even though that happens, it still looks very pretty. You cannot tell. It's very easy to piece the pieces back together again. Um, but what I did was um, I ripped off one of the tails of the S. So I glued the other S down first so that I knew the spacing of it. And then I was able to match the second S. Um, and then fix its little tail. And then anytime that uh, piece was coming up, I just rubbed the glue stick on the back of it um, so that it, just to stick it back down again, okay? And I did that with all of the letters, and then I ended up cutting a little scrap. Um, I printed this little scrap that was an apostrophe, okay? Now we're going to cut the green. Um, they're not really circles, but that's what we're going to do. So I took this green craft paper from the Dollar Tree, I folded it in half to get um, a piece that was five inches by four inches, uh, five by three and a half inches, excuse me. 
I folded it in half inside. The only reason I did that is because um, you can't see the pencil on the green. So I folded it backwards, but we're going to have the green side out. Um, and then um, I cut the two pieces in half to have two different pieces. I did this six times. And then I traced, um, that's the lid of a garbage can. <laughs> and then once I cut out the sample, I went ahead and I used that to cut the rest of them. Okay. And then I folded them all with the green sides out and prepped them to get ready to, um, to put on. All right. And now we're going to take three sheets of paper and we're going to fold them in half again. We're folding right sides together so that, um, uh, so that I can see what I'm drawing on the pencil. And then I traced a shamrock from the Dollar Tree. It's just a foam shamrock from my garland um, that I had leftovers. And I cut that out. And you're going to just uh, not cut the top bow. You're going to push the shamrock a little bit over the fold. Because this is going to act as a fold over um, the string. This is going to act how we're going to keep the, uh, the the shamrocks on. You see how they're just a, almost like a card. Okay. Now, once you have that, we're going to go ahead and cut our string. You do your string as long as you want it. Mine's going to go for my fireplace, so I came out here and I measured that. And then we're going to use this double sticky tape. Believe it or not, this du double stick tape I've had for a very long time. It came with a, a window insulation kit, um, which I used for shrink wrap for um, gift baskets. And then I used the double sticky tape forever and ever, so I still have some. Um, so what I did was, and unfortunately, that compromised video, you didn't get to see me tape everything, but two pieces of tape just like that on the green banner, the music notes, as well as these little tiny squares that have the letters on them. Okay, and then we're going to get ready. Oh, and we got forgot to double sticky tape this. <laughs> we double sticky tape the shamrocks. Um, then just want to make sure that you don't tape across the top because that's where it's going to fold and you want to be able to let it slide across the string for adjusting. Okay. And I made sure I put a piece of double sticky tape at the stem as well. All right. And also on the semicircles. You want tape on both sides of the semicircles. Now it's time to assemble. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to peel off the tape back. We're going to make sure we leave the space evenly around all sides, especially since we trimmed the top. And we're going to do that with the first the natural color is going to get the green on it. And then the green is going to go get the uh, music notes on it. And then what we're going to do is then you're going to take your little square with your letter and you're going to decide exactly where you want that spacing. I made mine so that it was evenly spaced from top to bottom and then evenly spaced from left to right. So the spaces on the left and right are not equal to the spaces on the top and the bottom of that little letter, okay? And that's just a matter of personal preference as well. I did really like this project because I really haven't done paper crafts in a very long time, it seems like. And as I was cutting and I, I have a paper cutter. Please don't send me a paper cutter. I have a paper cutter. I chose not to use it. Not everybody has a paper cutter. Everybody, but a lot of people have a ruler and a straight edge uh, and, a, and an X-Acto knife or a scissor. So I wanted to make sure I did it accessible to everyone else. Okay. Um, and you're just going to repeat this with all of the banners. Um, I have more St. Patrick's Day DIYs coming up. And again, I'm really sorry that this is already into March. I wanted to have this up a couple of days ago on the first, but just life has gotten away with me. So I apologize uh, ahead of time, but we do have a couple more coming for St. Patrick's Day. Okay. As well as the decorate with me video. All right. Now, um, there, when, when, when I was looking for inspiration for DIYs, um, like I said, this one was uh, was inspired to say lucky, but some people made banners that said March. Some people made banners that said um, that said uh, St. Pat's and some St. Patrick's Day or happy. Somebody put uh, it said happy and then two shamrocks and then day, um, which I guess would be uh, the three shamrocks. So like happy shamrock day or I, I don't really know, but you could say Irish if you wanted to. There's just you use your imagination. Um to go ahead and write whatever you want on the banner just you know that there's other options and obviously the paper um, one of the things I was considering instead of the green paper was if I had a green washi to go around the edge of a plain paper that that would be pretty too all right so once I have them all finished um, now I'm going to go ahead and put the semicircles around now I'm only taping the front to 
um, the basically the front where the letters is I'm going to leave the back tape on um, and again this is tape with a uh, protective coating um, so I'm going to leave the protective coating on um, until I get it on the string all right so I'm just gluing the semicircles right now to the front of all of the banner pieces all right and now I'm taking my string it's got a loop on one end these are going to slide but I just figured it was so much easier to fold them all since they're all folded on there to fold them all around the string than to try to thread the string through that's all so that's what I've decided to do and I've gone um, I'm working backwards because that's where I'm taping to the backs of things so I've just put laid the string down in the space peeled off the double sticky tape and folded the rest of the circle over I did ST and then a shamrock I did a shamrock ST then a shamrock then pats then a shamrock um, Make sure that you keep your T straight if you are going to use an apostrophe because I actually didn't and I had to peel the apostrophe off the first one <laughs> and put it on to the second one. Or you could just save your apostrophe to the end or you could skip the apostrophe altogether. But I figured since it belongs, the day belongs to St. Patrick, we'll go ahead and put an apostrophe on there, okay? And then you're just going to continue with the rest of the letters and the rest of the shamrocks and then bring it to your place where you're going to hang it so you can adjust them as well um, like I said this could be craft paper this can be construction paper it doesn't have to be cardstock because you do so many layers of paper that's what also gives it some body okay and here it is I absolutely love it I haven't done decorating for St. Patrick's Day so bear with me but here it is on my fireplace so far I hope you guys really enjoyed this video if you do please give it a thumbs up if you have any questions at all leave them in the comments down below don't forget to share with friends and family anybody you know might be interested in making one or something like it and if you haven't yet click subscribe and when you do a little bell will pop up when you ring that bell YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video and as always you take care God bless and I'll see you next time bye